Welcome to 5 Minute School. In today's video I want to look at the cardiac cycle. So this is going to be a introduction to a series of videos on the cardiac cycle. So this video is just going to keep it very basic and we have an image here of the heart and I just want your attention on a few structures here. We can see there are many structures which have been noted on. So here we have the left atrium, the right atrium here, the right ventricle here and the left ventricle here. Now there are other structures which are of importance for example the sinoatrial node, the atrioventricular node and the Purkinje fibers which you can see here. But this video is just going to be on the basics of the cardiac cycle. So we're going to look at systole, diastole and a few definitions as well and just give you a brief um, introduction to what happens in the phase of sorry in the phases of the cardiac cycle. So let's begin. The cardiac cycle is a repeating pattern of contraction and relaxation of the heart. And there are two phases of the cardiac cycle. We have um, systole, which is a contraction phase, and it lasts for 0.3 seconds. And we have diastole, which is a relaxation phase, and this lasts for 0.5 seconds. So a cardiac cycle each cycle is 0.8 seconds long because we can just add um, 0.3 to 0.5 each cycle has systole and then diastole and that gives us 0.8 seconds and the average cardiac cycle gives 75 beats per minute that's the average heart rate now during the cardiac cycle there is a two-step pumping mechanism and in this two-step pumping mechanism the left and right atria contract almost simultaneously and then just shortly afterwards the right and left ventricles then contract so what happens is first the uh, atria and ventricles relax and then venous return of the blood fills up the atria so the blood returning to the atria fills it up and as the volume of blood inside the atria increases the pressure inside the atria also increases now this pressure which um, is increasing in the atria causes the atrioventricular valves to open up and then blood goes from the atria to the ventricles we can see here there are valves which are between the atria and the ventricles it's not shown as well on this image but there are valves between the atria and the ventricles known as the atrioventricular valves so when the pressure inside the atria is increasing because of the increasing volume of blood these atrioventricular valves open up and then blood flows from the atria to the ventricles so then the ventricles are 80% filled with blood and then what happens is the atria then contract to get the rest of the blood into the ventricles. So the atrial contraction then allows the remaining 20% to enter the ventricles. Now, that's everything I want to touch on this video, but I'm just going to leave you with some final definitions which I think you'll find useful and are very important to know. So we have the end diastolic volume. This is the total blood volume in the ventricles at the end of diastole, so at the end of the relaxation phase. Now, the next one is stroke volume, and this is the volume of blood ejected from the ventricles in systole. And I've put two thirds here because only two thirds of the volume, sorry, two thirds of the blood in the ventricles is ejected. So um, we have two thirds of the volume of blood in the ventricles ejected in systole. The end diastolic volume is the volume of blood left in the ventricles at the end of systole and this is one thirds which is the amount of blood which is left in the ventricles at the end of systole. So this is the blood which isn't ejected and what remains in the ventricles. So that's the first part of the video series on the cardiac cycle. I hope you find this video useful. The next video will focus on the pressure changes and uh, also on the electrical conductivity of the heart. So thank you very much for watching.